My name is Chinido. I grew up in a small Igbo village called Yumiuk. Life was simple there. We farmed, shared stories by the fire, and celebrated the New Yam festival with drums and dances. But everything changed the day the prince came to our village. Prince Nkem was known across the land. They said he was powerful, with many warriors and riches. But there were also whispers, dark whispers, that he was not a good man. Some said he had a heart as cold as stone, but I didn't believe it. How could a prince be wicked? I was young and didn't know better. One market day, the prince visited our village. He arrived with a large entourage, wearing fine clothes and gold jewelry that shone in the sun. He spoke to the elders, praising our village and saying he wanted strong young men to serve him in his palace. He promised a good life, food, clothes, and even land. When the elders asked for volunteers, my heart raced. My family was poor, and I wanted to help them. Serving the prince seemed like a dream come true. So, I stepped forward along with six other boys. We were full of excitement as we left our village. Our mothers cried, but they were also proud. They believed we would come back with wealth and honor. The journey to the palace was long and tiring, but we were filled with hope. When we arrived, the palace was even grander than we had imagined. But soon, the beauty faded. The prince's true nature began to show. We were given tasks, hard tasks, not the kind we were used to at home. We worked from sunrise to sunset, carrying heavy loads, cleaning large halls, and doing things that made our hands bleed. The food was scarce, and the guards were cruel. But the worst was the prince himself. He had a temper like a wild animal. When he was angry, he would beat us, and sometimes, he would lock us in dark rooms with no food or water. One day, my friend Obina made a mistake. He spilled water on the prince's robe. The prince's face turned dark, and before anyone could stop him, he struck Obina across the face. We watched in horror as Obina fell to the ground. The prince didn't stop there. He ordered his guards to take Obina away. We never saw him again. That night, fear gripped my heart. I knew I had to escape. But how? The palace was surrounded by high walls and guarded by fierce warriors. I couldn't leave during the day, so I decided to sneak out at night. I waited until the palace was silent. The moon was high, casting shadows on the walls. My heart pounded as I crept through the palace, avoiding the guards. I made it to the outer wall, but it was too high to climb. Desperation filled me, but I couldn't give up. I remembered a small opening near the back of the palace where the water flowed out. I squeezed through the opening, scraping my arms and legs, but I didn't care. I was free. I ran as fast as I could, not stopping until I reached the thick forest that surrounded the palace. I hid there until morning, trembling with fear. The journey back to Yumiuk was long and difficult. I was weak, hungry, and scared. But I kept going. When I finally reached my village, my family was shocked to see me. I told them everything, the prince's cruelty, Obina's fate, and how I escaped. The elders listened in silence. They were ashamed that they had sent us to such a place. They thanked the gods that I had returned but mourned the loss of the others. My mother wept, holding me close. The wealth of the wicked brings only sorrow, she said, and I knew she was right. From that day, our village never sent anyone to the prince again. We learned that not all that glitters is gold, and sometimes, the promise of riches can lead to great pain. Life in Yumuk returned to normal, but the scars of my time in the palace remained. I was no longer the eager, hopeful boy who had left. I had seen the darkness in men's hearts, and it had changed me. But I was grateful to be home, where the love of family and the warmth of the community could heal even the deepest wounds. And so, 
we continued our lives, remembering the lesson that no amount of wealth is worth the price of losing one's soul.